<laughs> yeah, so Kevin uh, actually at, uh, asked, uh, Ron, how do, how do you decide whether you go on the appointment versus offer over the phone? Well, while I'm on the phone with them, listening to them, I just do a quick, I do a quick value search. Generally, I use Zillow. It's easy, it's quick, it's usually close these days because Zillow's numbers are, their system has a lot of historical data now, which is how their algorithm works in regards to getting numbers. Yep. And, you know, in a lot of ways, because I've done so much business, I kind of can, I can kind of tell if Zillow's like all wet. But even even Zillow's sold data comes off our MLS, right? So, so if it's close and, and around the the property, then you can get a ballpark, and then you kind of gauge their, you know, their price checker system, right? Are they just yeah. price checking, um, or are they really serious about possibly selling their house? And you got to, I, I don't think there's a true hard answer to that question. It's more being able to smell it, meaning you. Yeah. Just, know and understand their motivation you know usually like somebody says i'm coming into town my mom dad passed away i'll be there for three days and i'm i'm gonna have four people come through the house do you want to come and they'll, and they'll usually say i'm having an open house right so i i'll go to the open house you just can't hurt and usually i go at the end so that everybody else has been first because they're not going to sign a contract as much as you're hard at them at the beginning is not going to sign it. So going in last as much as we can is always the best bet. In my opinion. You don't want to be the first guy in the door because they'll never sign with you if they got three other appointments. They just won't. Um, so. That is true. Yeah, it's they they won't sign the first one because they'll, you know. So if they say that they're having an open house, yeah, come. And, come and if, right, and if you say something to the effect that when I walk out the door, the offer is not valid anymore. They're not calling you because that's, right. that's a pressure tactic that car salesmen use. You know, you get bombarded all day long with that kind of stuff on the radio and television. Yep. You know, just, just don't do it. If, if your number's right, you just wait it out. That's yeah. So usually what I, how I respond to that is I say, Hey, my offer is good for a little while. I'm just letting you know the market's changing. Yeah, for sure. Every every month, every week. So you know, if you call me back, I'm I may have to. If it's a some time difference, I'm gonna have to rerun the numbers. But for the most part, I, I'll try to stay around the same area. So um, yep. just keep in mind this market's going down, and you don't want to catch a falling knife. And you need to be you need to use that as your advantage yeah about the market falling like if you wait a couple more and, and, and that's and that's an honest response yeah it's not like you're making it up exactly like, hey you know 60 days from now i may have to reevaluate that number you know if you're really serious about selling it today at, at this number then we need to do this now because as a wholesaler you're looking about velocity anyway right yep. if you contract today you're just gonna hopefully sell it tomorrow that's what you're that's the point of what you do yeah yeah so you know unlike a rehabber which is why you have to in a falling market like we have now you need to build in that extra little piece for the rehab guy because he's the one the guy you're selling it to he's yep. the one that's gonna have to be out 90 days 120 days and he's worried which is why a lot of the rehabbers are hunkered down a lot of mm -hmm. the big guys that buy a lot of houses now they're just finishing up their inventory because, yeah. because they don't want to buy at the moment. Yeah, there's a lot of them right now that if they do buy uh, flips, they need them at a severe discount. Right. Um, so a lot of people are buying right now are, are buying holds where they want to add that value so that they have that extra equity, but they're going to need a still a, a decent discount, you know? And of course, you, you've got the one-off guys too that yeah. Well, they just need to keep their crews busy. You know, those are the best ones because they'll pay more. Exactly. Because they just want to keep their crews moving and they'll make 15000 instead of thirty. you know. So, which, you know, I just do this like, really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry I couldn't get it cheap enough for you. Right. Kind of so, yeah. So, with that being said, you know, how are you finding your buyers now with your experience and everything 
you, I mean, I'm sure you have buyers coming to you and, and you go to network meetups and you do a lot of outreach and things like that. But say you were to have to start over, okay? How would you go about finding your buyers? In today's world, Facebook is a great place to find buyers. You know, we have a very good Facebook page in Detroit yep. that is very uh, honest, you know, sometimes brutally honest. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, so, and I'm okay with that. I yep. get in and I do what I do. Um, I've got a track record of buying good out, getting good deals. And so. how do you, how do you differentiate in the Facebook posts, uh, somebody who's a buyer versus another wholesaler trying to j like daisy chain the deal? Uh, I don't know if there's an a science to that there's an art to smelling somebody you know asking you know um you know i don't facebook a lot of deals because my list is pretty good right wait and my list is very intuitive like i the system i use to blast that list i can tell who opens the email and how quick right. they, you know my experience as of late is the you know usually within the first 10 15 minutes whoever's going to open opens it and then if, and if jessica my assistant doesn't get a call back from one of those then you know the price isn't that good it doesn't mean it's not good it just means that the guys that are always looking at my list they just don't want it right, right. and recently you know i've been because i'm a real estate broker i have access to the mls so i have access to all the realtors emails and stuff i've been i've got a list of realtors that have investors and that's kind of like my third tier send is a send to the realtors because then I got to pay a commission to do that. Yep. Um, or I just tell them right up front that I'm not paying a commission. Um, in general, yeah, buyer. Yeah. And of course, if I send it to them, well, I'm going to pay the commission because I'm I'm not desperate, but I'm looking for the buyer. That's right. All. And the house I had in Roseville and Patau, that's how I you know I was having a hard time wholesaling it. I end up buying it and then still having a hard time when I put it on the MLS, I sent it to a list of realtors and I got the, it was an investor guy that just happened to be on my list and meaning the, meaning the realtor list and he bought it. Right. Now, the upside to that is he's buying it for himself. So he doesn't want the commission anyway. So it's just like me sell, it's actually better for me to sell it to a, a realtor with no commission because then I'm, I'm still paying the closing costs again. But I'm not paying the three percent on the on the listing or on the on the buyer commission side. Got it. Yeah. You know, I always ask them too if they're realtors buying it for themselves. I always ask them, are you taking the commission or not? Because that that has a lot to do with my counter. I mean, when I counter them, I take that into consideration what they're doing. You know how they're going to take the commission or not. Right. Yeah. So. Um... How do you, how, how are you working with uh, agents besides just paying them the commission? Have you, as far as on the acquisition side, do you reach out to them to, you know, try to get their off market deals or anything like that? Sometimes I do. It's not, I think it's more, it's becoming more a technique now because the market is slipping. So getting on the MLS to figure out what property has been on the market for 90 days plus, mm -hmm. and where the you know where the numbers are, you know the MLS is very good at data. So you can figure out where all the cash buyers are buying by simply doing a search of cash sales in the last 30 days. So then you can look up and get a buyer's list for that, or the realtors that sold them that house send them an email and say, "Hey, I got this property," um, or you know. The, you can kind of work backwards the square foot number. So in other words, if you look at all the pretty houses they sold, let's say they sold for a hundred bucks. Of course, the general formula is 65 minus repairs, right? So right. it's not that difficult to then go look up all the listings that are 65% of a hundred dollars a foot, right? Mm -hmm. And find a listing that way, even right. if it's an expired one. Yeah. If it's expired because, and then, trying to you obviously need to figure out whether it's sold or not because a lot of times it doesn't sell on the mls but it was there just look at the public record to see if there's a deed transfer and call that call yep. that particular skip trace them and call them don't mm -hmm. necessarily call the realtor 
first because you don't want to you don't want to have to put yourself in the position not to pay the realtor but if that's the only way you can find that seller then do it yep i know a lot of realtors just from all the reos i sold so a lot of guys that have investor friends i know the ones that are still in the business um and there's a handful of guys that used to do what i do some of them still do it in regards yep. to because there is there's a handful of them out there um so i build off of those relationships for years just as you you knew who i was when you first met me yeah I, you know i've been around a while so and i have a hopefully i have a good reputation of doing what's right and not barking at you too loud or biting <laughs> you know sometimes yeah. if i if i bit you that's because you deserved it for some reason. And, and that's one thing is is that if somebody like ron i or any of the bigger you know they if they if they gripe at you about something or, or hey, you gotta you better pay attention to it and you better really analyze what it is you're doing because i've done that before and it's funny because you know i was on the facebook group that you're talking about and and i looked at that you know, somebody had a wholesale deal and i'm like i i think it was like for he's trying to sell it for 40 grand it was one in detroit and and um i go i commented on there like dude i tried selling this for 25 grand and it, i got no traction period like blah 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 and todd you know one of the first guys that i jv'd with private messaged me said don't do that right he's like you don't need there's no reason you need to call out people like that you don't want to be that guy all it does is show everybody else what you're like exactly right so you don't even if that's what you're thinking don't yeah put it on there and you'll learn right meaning yep the good guys that are going to stick around they learn how to react and how to how to have some integrity and I don't, it's not even an integrity issue it's just a, being a good person yeah you know, don't argue and belittle people just do what you're gonna do you know? and there's a couple of people that do that and it's like now nah, i understand why not to and there's right. not. and so now if they come to me privately and ask me my opinion i'll give them yeah, that for sure but the old saying is you get more bees with honey than you do vinegar exactly right? it's it's true it's true in every in every aspect is yep. be nice about it so now with our facebook group you know metro detroit off-market real estate group we're trying to add value as much as much as we can we were by doing these lives uh by bringing people on like you and, and showing you know that you know we are trying to make the group better as well and we're trying to make uh you know i'm trying to make it where the uh you know all the scammers and and all the trying to make it not seem I, I want people posting deals in there you know i want to see the deals that's a full-time job by the way. yeah <laughs> so that is it's definitely so if you've been kicked out because you've posted too many of your advertisements yeah. you know or usually if it's just that i just delete the post um but if you consistently do it then then i ban you from the group but for the most part you know how many people you got in that group now so we're up to about 2500 right now yeah, oh good that's good that's you only been doing it for a couple months right uh since april yeah so that's good that's a that's a good engagement for sure yeah, yeah. so which is yeah it's it's good and i, I can't i i'm happy with the engagement that we have i have a goal of 5000 by the end of the year okay so i think we i think we can make it yeah you know? um and I think by us doing, me doing this every week and, you know, kind of bring some, some good awareness, hopefully, you know, yeah. um, sure. from there. So, but I'm out there trying, you know, at, at the investor meetups, uh, uh, trying to do as much as possible. Um, actually the one that is this Thursday, we won't, I won't be able to go to cause I'm out of town. Oh, okay. But the, the, the one at McVee's pub. Yeah. So, yep. Um, but you know, anybody who does by any means who, you know, if you're local to the area, go to all the meetups, more than likely you'll see Ron there. 
say hi to them, you know, um, and things like that. So, I uh, who was who's the one that said? So Kevin sit put it on here. He said another great sales book is you can't teach a kid to ride a bike uh, at a seminar. <laughs> Uh, it's for sales training and works perfect for wholesale process. Awesome. So, okay. Okay. 